During the 11 minute era, which ran from 2019 through to 2022, something Ninjago really enjoyed doing was experimenting with the animation style. For the first time in, at the time, the franchise's eight year long history, Ninjago started taking diversions from its iconic 3D animated Lego art style. I introduced to you the 2D animated Ninjago episodes, which, looking back, are some of the most interesting oddities to come out of this entire franchise for me. There was nothing like these things coming from the main Ninjago show beforehand, and nothing quite like them afterwards. How Ninjago actually implemented the 2D art styles was always really cool to me. Being reserved specifically for flashback scenes and episodes dedicated to replicating a specific art style. For example, you had one episode which was an homage to anime, and another episode inspired by the old He-Man cartoon. Limiting the 2D style to only flashback episodes made it so that the art style experimentation had plenty of room to breathe, whilst also not treading on the feet of the regular 3D Ninjago art style, which I appreciate. These episodes are pretty controversial amongst Ninjago fans, but honestly, I really like all three of them. I think the new animation styles are incredibly cool, and yet another example of Ninjago constantly trying to innovate, and never resting on its laurels. Today, I want to take a video to have a look back on all three of these episodes. The Absolute Worst, The Last of the Formlings, and Dungeon Party and evaluate how I feel about them five years later. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The Absolute Worst First airing on September 7th of 2019, the absolute worst is the first of the three episodes we have to cover today, and one that Ninjago fans absolutely hate. Oh, it's called the absolute worst because it's the absolute worst episode of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the joke makes itself, but honestly, this episode isn't even close to being Ninjago's worst episode for me. I get that it has its problems, which I'm going to get into here, but the worst thing I can say about this episode is that it's just an inoffensive diversion from the main season 11 plotline, using the time to flesh out the criminal underbelly of Ninjago's world a little bit. It doesn't near irreparably damage the canon, and it isn't painful to watch or anything. It's just kind of inoffensive and whatever to me. Heck, I think there are even season 11 episodes that are worse than this one. This episode follows the mechanic, ultraviolet, and newcomer character Fujidove, as they try to escape from Cryptarium prison whilst telling exaggerated and untrue stories of how the ninja defeated them and threw them in there. The over-the-top anime art style really works for me here. The style is used exclusively for when the villains are telling their made-up stories about the ninja, with the scenes taking place in reality still having the regular 3D art style. And I think having a super exaggerated anime art style fits well for the flashbacks of unreliable narrators who exaggerate everything they say. The mechanic and ultraviolet are really fun characters, so seeing them again in this brief diversion from the Ice Chapter plot was really fun to me. They bounce off of each other really well and have some great dialogue. I also really like Fuji Dove in his first appearance here. I think he started to overstay his welcome a bit as time went on, especially near the end of the 11 minute era, but this first appearance from him is nice and I enjoy it. The actual flashback scenes themselves are so, so fun, man. Seeing Ninjago's Walden characters get reimagined through a different art style was really fun to watch, especially when we get to Ultraviolet's story, who is retelling the ending of Season 9. Seeing full-on huge events in the Ninjago canon reimagined like this through Ultraviolet size was really fun. My biggest issue with this episode, though, is that it just didn't really need to be in the place it was in. This episode is sandwiched in between two super plot important Ice Chapter episodes, and sticks out like a massive fillery sore thumb as a result of that. I think if this thing was released as a YouTube exclusive episode on LEGO's channel or something, it would have been received a lot better than it was as a numbered season 11 episode. If making this thing a LEGO channel upload wasn't possible, another change I wish I could make here was the ending of the episode. This episode ends with the criminals getting caught in their escape plan and getting thrown back into prison, which makes the whole story of the episode feel a bit pointless in the end. Given that season 12 starts us out with the mechanic having broken out of prison off screen anyways, it would have made so much more sense to end this episode with at least the mechanic escaping. It would have been a great little teaser for season 12 and would have given this episode more reason to exist as a numbered Ninjago episode. Overall, this isn't a bad episode, let alone one of the worst in franchise history. It's just an inoffensive, fun diversion that fleshes out an aspect of the Ninjago world that wouldn't have been otherwise, whilst experimenting with Ninjago's art style in a really cool and creative way. I just wish it didn't feel like such a distraction from the Ice Chapter storyline, man. This episode is scoring a 6 out of 10 from me. The absolute worst isn't a bad episode episode, but it's not exactly exceptional or anything. The Last of the Formlings The next episode we have here is another Season 11 episode, which aired on the 21st of September 2019. The Last of the Formlings. In my opinion, this isn't just the best of Ninjago's 2D episodes. 
It's also one of the best Ninjago episodes to ever come out. This episode tells the tale of Akita finding her animal form of her brother Kataru, before having to watch in horror as the Ice Emperor's dragon lays waste to her entire village and family. This is the episode that really sold me on Akita. It did an incredible job of giving me an idea of who this character is and what she's going through. The prior episodes had built up that something really bad happened in her past that caused her to be as untrusting as she is. And this episode gave us an explanation that really delivered on that setup. Akita had her entire life, family, and home snatched from her by a malicious bad faith actor manipulating an elemental warlord. Just like Lloyd did in Season 8. This episode creates a deeper link between Lloyd and Akita by revealing that both of their trauma comes from the same place. The parallels between Lloyd's situation in the Oni trilogy and Akita's with Vex are so strong here, even down to just the cinematography and shot composition of both of their traumatic moments. Relating Akita to our main character here does a great job at giving us a sense of how badly Akita was hurt by this memory, and creates a deeper bond between herself and Lloyd through having Lloyd realize how hurt Akita was here alongside the viewer. Although, this episode is as much about Akita as it is the civilian perspective of the final day before the long winter that Vex would subject the Neverrealm to. It does a great job at showing us the Neverrealm and its people in their prime, contrasting wonderfully against the bleak and oppressive feeling of the place in the modern day, making us want to see Vex and the Ice Emperor defeated so this peace can be restored. The Ice Chapter has the most gorgeous soundtrack in all of Ninjago in my opinion, and to me, The Last of the Formlings is the episode where it really shines. In the goal of getting us attached to the pre Ice Emperor Never Realm. This episode is full to the brim with atmospheric scenes where the music is seriously incredible and fits the moment perfectly. My only issue here is that some of the character movement in this episode can be a bit janky at times. It's never the worst thing in the world. The episode's 2D art style is still gorgeous and there are moments of great animation, but the movement can be janky sometimes and it does bug me a bit in some of the shots. Also, man, the Ice Emperor's dragon Boreal here really could have benefited from looking a bit less adorable given that he goes on a murderous rampage in this episode. Despite those gripes of mine though, the 2D art style looks great here and really sells the atmospheric tone of the episode. The lighting especially is just drop dead gorgeous man, so good. This episode goes under the rug for a lot of people which is absolutely crazy to me. As for me personally, this is one of the quintessential Ninjago episodes. This episode is scoring a 10 out of 10 from me. I have some very minor gripes with it, but I think it's an incredible episode of Ninjago all around. Good lord man, I can't believe this thing's about to turn 5 years old. Dungeon Party. Released on the 15th of July 2020, the season 13 episode Dungeon Party is the final of Ninjago's three 2D animated episodes. This episode introduces us to the party of failed adventurers called the Lowly. Much like the previous 2D episodes we talked about, this episode is mostly comprised of flashbacks that take us back in time and show us how the three Lowly met on their quest to destroy the skull of Hazador, before ultimately getting betrayed by King Vangelis and then cast down to the bottom of the earth. This one isn't the best of the 2D Ninjago episodes, but I think it's the episode with the best take on the 2D art style. The characters are way more energetic here and their movements are far more fluid than they were in the season 11 2D episodes, which I think is a great improvement. This one uses its opportunity of being a 2D animated episode following a barbarian to do an episode paying homage to the 1980s He-Man cartoon. And the 2D art style fits that vision for the episode really well. It's also just absolutely gorgeous in its own right a lot of the time. The shots of the Upley entering the mines and then the wide shot of the Skull of Hazador are my two favourites of the episode. I think they're really gorgeous. That being said, the visual style still does leave a little bit to be desired. I wish there was a little more visual fidelity here, even like Last of the Formlings had. Just some more rays of light and reflections and other atmospherics would have really helped, because the 2D art style here does look a little flat visually sometimes. But all around, it still looks pretty great. I can only wonder how good the hypothetical next 2D episodes would have looked if the animators were allowed to have another try at this. This episode also just does a great job of getting us introduced to and attached to the lowly. This is such an entertaining group of characters, and I'm really glad we got to have a whole episode where they were able to take the center stage as leads. They're archetypal for sure, but all three of these guys are so fun to watch that I can overlook it. Corgram the Barbarian is definitely the standout character for me here though. This this dude is an absolute riot, I love him so much. A perfect mix of total stupidity and pure awesomeness, Corgran is such a funny character. Also, I love Conan the Barbarian, so by extension, all of his parodies are awesome too. And the gag of Corgran's axe talking to him is absolutely hysterical. Almost five years later, and I'm honestly still not sure if the axe was actually magic or not. Finally, getting an in-depth episode long look at yet even more people the Skull Sorcerer has hurt really does wonders at further establishing him as a threatening antagonist. This episode is scoring 
scoring an 8 out of 10 from me. The art style is mostly great, the characters are super entertaining, the plot is engaging, and the comedy is on point. Great episode. Averaging up all three of the scores I gave these episodes today, this set of episodes is getting an overall score of 8 out of 10 from me. These things weren't perfect by any means, but they were constantly improving with each one. While flawed, I do think that these episodes are genuinely great. The absolute worst messed with its season's pacing a bit, but after that first attempt, the other two of these episodes were unmissable parts of their seasons, using the 2D art style to offer up something completely new to Ninjago. It's a shame the 11 minute era didn't do more episodes like this in its next two seasons after season 13, but in the present day, I'm not too torn up about losing this type of Ninjago episode. I love these three episodes, don't get me wrong, and I'm glad that we have them, but where this show truly excels has always been with its gorgeous 3D animation. Even on the a third of these three episodes, the 2D art style was still having growing pains of getting the look entirely down. And on top of that, the thing that facilitated these kinds of episodes to exist was the 11 minute episode format, which has since been abandoned in favor of 22 minute long episodes. So for those two reasons, I really don't think a return to these kinds of episodes would work all that well nowadays. It's not like Ninjago stopped experimenting with its art entirely after this though. We've since had a bunch of gorgeous looking lore dump scenes that have all had incredibly cool and unique visual styles of their own. We've also had some 2D animated YouTube shorts like Golden Legend and Gold Rush, which look absolutely incredible and fix all of my problems with the 2D visuals of these episodes. On top of all of that, the entire 3D Ninjago art style got a massive overhaul with Dragons Rising, moving to a more painterly aesthetic. Despite the loss of these 2D gimmick episodes, Experimentation is very much still alive and well in Ninjago's visuals, and because of it, Ninjago is looking better than ever.